In this lecture, I'll be teaching you how to import color palettes into LibreSprite. And of course, we'll be setting up our base foundation for our character's structure in a top-down perspective. So before we start this lecture, I want to go over how you can actually find color palettes online and get them into LibreSprite. Close down Google and open up my LibreSprite. And once we open up a new file, click OK. What we can do is on the top left panel up here, right down below the Home tab, we can click on this Option tab. And then once we click on Option, we can click Load Palette. And then just find wherever this palette is loaded to. So in my example, I saved it to the desktop. So it's right here. I'm gonna click on that and it's going to grab the exact palette that we found on LOSMAC into LibreSprite. So this is just a really simple way to get any kind of color palette you find online, including the ones that I use in the lectures to get them into LibreSprite super quick and easy. So without further ado, let's create a basic top-down character we can use as a base model moving forward. To begin, I'll create a new file and make this a 24 by 24 pixel sized canvas. Click OK, and once we have our canvas actually set up, I'm actually gonna be importing a color palette for this character. Once we have our workspace set up correctly, I will begin by moving down five pixels from the top of the canvas and painting on a peach colored 14 pixel width by nine pixel height rectangle for our head. To make sure this actually looks like a head, I'm going to remove all of the corner pixels from this rectangle to round off our image to make it a little bit more like a sideways oval shape. We then move down a pixel from the bottom and create a four width line for our neck at the center of our head. And then we can swap to a new color. I'm gonna pick this orange color to create the structure for our shirt slash torso. This rectangle will be six pixels wide by five pixels tall. And once we have that all ready to go, we can create the legs for our character. For making our legs, I'll start by creating two blue, two width by three pixel tall rectangles from the outer edge of the torso, and then connect these two with a line across the top of the legs to create our character's hips. As the drawing currently stands, we don't have enough space for the feet so I'll press M or access the selection tool, drag over our entire canvas and hold left click to drag our character up one pixel so we can actually fit the feet into our drawing. Now real quick, I would like you to attempt to draw on our feet before I do to see if you can figure out where our feet might be facing from a front angled perspective. Hopefully I had a chance to try that out. So now what I did is I put three brown pixels across the bottom of the legs with both feet sticking out away from the character's torso. The reason I'm doing this is I want to make sure that we are not favoring a side for our character since we are in a front facing perspective. We will revisit this later when I create platformer based characters, having both feet pointing in one direction to turn our character on a specific axis, but with top down characters, this will work just fine. The next thing to do is design our arms for our character. So when creating the hands and arms, I'll start from the top of our torso and draw a line down about five pixels. Then when we want to form the rest of the hand, let's imagine that our arm is a mini staircase shaving off one pixel height as we extend out from the bottom of the hand to show the roundness of the shoulder moving down towards the closed fist. Now once again, pause the video and create your character's right arm without using reference to the video to see if you can remember how to form this rounded off rectangular shape without guidance. All right, now that we have the second arm created using the same rounded off rectangle method, we move into the final lesson of the day where we create our character's eyes. I'll grab a white color and move in three pixels up from the bottom corner of the head and six pixels across to form the bottom right corner of our eye. Now I'll create a four width by two height white rectangle for our base and do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, three pixels from the bottom of the chin and six pixels to the left to meet the inside corner of our eye. Once we've got our little rectangle in place, 
For creating a separation from the eye and the skin, we will take a black color and line the top of the eye with one pixel from the outer corner as a form of eyelash around both eyes. We then move down to the top middle of the white and create a two pixel black line as the start of our pupils. Looks a little weird right now, but grabbing a new color we can use for the color of the eye, I will make a three pixel width line across the bottom inside of the white to form the remaining pupil. Once we fill in both eyes, I'll put a lighter color highlight in the center of the colored line to give a nice shine to our eye. I want to keep that white in the top inner corners of the eye as it acts as a shine to the pupil. And there we go. That's how we can create a basic form structure for our top-down character models. The final thing to do is actually save your work. You're going to go to the top left here, select File. We can click on Save As. And wherever you want this saved to, you can name this whatever you want. So I'm just going to name this Base Character 1. Then we can name this a .ase file so we can reopen this back up into LibreSprite when we want to. Click OK. And there you go. So you set up a basic character foundation. Let's grab our skin colors shadow color to begin shading the edge surface of the left, right, and top of our head. We are shading around the head to show the character is slightly looking down, showing the back and sides of the character's face. In other words, we're just adding a little bit of depth to our character. Now I'll line the middle of the eye's bottom edge in shadow to show more depth in our character's face. Just like we've done in our detailing silhouettes, I'm going to also shade the entire neck as this piece won't absorb any light under the chin. Now using a technique that we've also learned in the previous section, I will now be adding a black outline all the way around our character, making sure that I don't add any black lining underneath the bottom of the feet so our player looks like they're actually standing on ground. Now, if you are happy with our current arms, that's totally okay, but I'm going to ever so slightly extend the sleeves of our shirt to show where our shoulders cut off and shrink our hands up one pixel to further cuten up this character's design even more. Let's add a little bit of complexity to our t-shirt. So I'll make an open button t-shirt by lining the middle two columns of our orange shirt in white to show some kind of undershirt forming. As far as shading goes, we only really need two dark pixels in the top corners of the shirt to create an illusion of a more rounded off shoulder, again showing where the light would start to trail off. Now we have added our base colors and shadows to our skin and shirt. I would like you to attempt to highlight our torso by adding in a highlight color to our shirt. Just keep in mind, we have talked about this before in our detailed silhouettes lecture, where we tried to imagine what part of the body should have the most light shown. Take a second to try and highlight your own shirt and then resume the video when you are ready to see my result. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult, but the way I decided to highlight the shirt was by creating a rounded off square-like shape on the top center of the torso to highlight the chest area of our character as this is the most exposed piece of our body. The light should fade down where the stomach is, and it shouldn't be too bright near the tops of the shoulder as that's still being covered slightly by the chin. The final thing we can do to finish off our shirt is to add a shadow color to the inside t-shirt. So I'm going to line the top and bottom rows to give an illusion of highlighting the center of the chest to match the outer shirt. For our pants, we will grab a lighter color and light the tops of the knees and the corners of the hips, forming some kind of L-shaped pattern with two pixels of highlight in the center of the hip region to lighten up the top half of the pants compared to the shins or the lower side of the legs. Once again, I would like you to pause the video in a moment to highlight our shoes from a front-facing perspective. So pause, try highlighting the shoes, and resume the video when you're finished. The way that I highlighted the shoes was to light the outer two pixels, leaving the inner pixels towards the middle of the character shaded to show where the front of the feet stand apart from the heels. We want to make sure both feet are facing outwards as we are trying to keep a neutral stance and not favor a side in this perspective. Finally, we can add some additional personality to our character by adding some hair. 
We'll start by creating three rows of our character's hair color, adding a couple pixels in an upside down staircase pattern on each side to create a rounded off shape to have the hair feel natural on the top of the head. Now hair might be a little tricky at first, but I'd like you to experiment and play around with adding a second highlight color to create depth, texture, and imperfections in the hair. As always with highlighting, make sure you are using your lighter color to create detail in showing where the hair would protrude out and avoid using single pixels as hair is usually best shown in clusters. Take a moment to try experimenting with your own hairstyle. Finally, I'm not fully happy with the arms once again, so I am moving our shoulders in one pixel from the top, extending the sleeve down a pixel, and also dropping the arms down an entire pixel to fix our character's posture to be more relatable and less boxed off. Once you are fully happy with your character, make sure to save your work as a .ase file so that you can access again later in future lectures. That is going to wrap up this detailing characters lecture, so make sure to continue on as we will be creating some even more interesting characters in the following lectures based off of what we have learned here.